This is the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast, session number 307, Taking a Leap. Welcome to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette, your professional resource for hypnosis training and outstanding business success. Here's your host, Jason Lynette. Before we jump into this week's session, all under the theme of Taking a Leap, let's take a moment and discuss our good friend, metaphor. That as hypnotists, we understand the importance of storytelling that through the metaphorical structure of telling a story, we can illustrate rather interesting points to motivate change, shift belief systems, and help our clients. And that's part of why along the way in these 307 plus episodes, this is technically number 307, but then again, a few times over the last seven or so years, I've put out a few special release podcast episodes Either way, we've put out a lot of these, and it's where along this journey with you, I've made it a point to often become extremely transparent in terms of the mindset of calling my shot. And what I mean by that is the moment of announcing I'm going to put out a book and I put a date attached to that project because by doing that with all of you, that became my little checkpoint to go, okay, this absolutely has to happen. The moment of announcing that I was going to do a TEDx talk, again, the moment that announcement was made, I had to make that happen. And behind the scenes, I don't think I've mentioned this here so far, the rollout of the brand new JasonLinette.com website, as well as the Hypnotic Language Hacks podcast, part of the rollout of that involved a little bit of an adventure that I haven't done in years. And what I mean by that was that the people who were building that website sent an email on Tuesday morning going, hey, we're not going to have it done on time, we'll be about two or three days late. Which at that point, there were 10 episodes ready to be released Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. And in my world, that's not okay. Now, I understood the reasons why they were going to be a little delayed on that, but it became a moment of rallying the troops, reaching out to former designers, outsourcers, and three of us stayed up until 4.45 in the morning, and everything launched on time. In the words of Lauren Michaels, Longtime producer and creator of Saturday Night Live, whether we're ready or not, the show goes live at 11.30. So over time, you know, announcing events. So I've made it a point to be rather transparent about the projects that I do. So a lot of this week's episode is a little bit more personal, definitely more of a solo episode. I was about to go on Facebook Live and do this one Yet I felt to be alone in my office, the lights are off, just the light from the window coming in and recording, just you and I having this conversation together. That's what this episode ought to be. Because the theme of taking a leap, taking a leap is definitely going to be the theme of a lot of what I'm going to be up to over the next several weeks and months. And you all get to watch in real time because it's where the day that this episode releases there's some rather interesting events afoot. This episode is going to release on Thursday, January 14th, a day that I will not be in the office, as well as on Friday, January 15th, because on the 14th, we're going to be finishing our touches on packing up our home in Northern Virginia. That's when movers come in on Friday the 15th. We're going to be moving into a temporary rental home in Springfield, Virginia, for about five or six weeks. That's going to give a time frame to sell our home. And I put out a special release program a couple of weeks ago, but here's a bit of an update. So my wife and I kind of looked around, and let's talk in the themes of this podcast. Everything changed back in March of 2020. There were rumblings of illness, a virus that was going around the world. And then, as I put it, here's the day where the kids got hit, sent home from school, school early in our area, and they've yet to go back. Now, we were a bit unhappy with the way that things were going to be run with the virtual school system. So it takes a village. We decided to then homeschool our own kids. So at seven and nine years old, we're doing a balance of the different subjects in the school. And I saw panic in our hypnotic profession. I saw a lot of people, and we were hopeful at that time going, oh, you know, maybe in July we'll go back to normal. And here I am recording in early January, and things are still not exactly where we'd like them to be. And I'll just, I'll leave it at that. So it's where I saw the panic in this profession, and I've got a whole folder of emails that kind of helped to ratify something that I did, which those of you that this might be your first time listening, go to worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash 
now online. No spaces, no punctuation, just cram those two words together. That'll actually redirect you over to episode number 260, which was all about the response to the coronavirus pandemic, which kicked off a whole series for the first time ever. The Work Smart Hypnosis podcast was coming out twice a week, specifically highlighting people who had been doing a lot of work online, which I've hinted at this story, and I, I don't get into the specifics because it doesn't serve any of us, but it's where back in 2012, I was asked by a major organization to kind of be the fresh face poster child of the message that online sessions were bad. Online education was not the way of the future, and I refused to do that. And it's where as early as 2012, 2013, by putting out videos on YouTube, by putting out content online, what was happening was I was already starting to get requests for online sessions. So this is back in the days of Skype, where the platforms were not as good as they could have been. They've clearly gotten better over time. A lot of people still put down Skype. Skype has become exceptionally better, especially I'll call this out. Like most services, if you actually pay for the service, it delivers a whole lot more. And take that statement I've just made and apply it to Zoom, apply it to Calendly, apply it to services like MailChimp. When you pay for the software, they actually give you more features and give you more bandwidth. So I will call this out. Other than a power failure, I've not had Skype fail for me in about three or four years. That being said, Zoom clearly won the game in terms of 2020 and into 2021 in terms of online sessions. So I bring this up because over time, the business of doing sessions online, yes, the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast was built for a very specific audience, people who are already hypnotists who are looking to do hypnosis better. That's a tiny micro niche market inside of another niche market already. And even in spite of that, over the years, I've received many clients from this program. And I'll share with you, for those of you that are hypnotists here, of course, it's been a funny conversation at times where they often go, hey, I found your program. That was really interesting. I'm not the audience, am I? I'm like, well, it's, you know, there's no real trade secrets. There's a lot of us that actively teach this stuff, yet uh, it's very much built for a specific audience, people who are already aware of the hypnotic profession and want to do hypnosis better, want to run their businesses better. That is the laser-focused audience of the Work Smart Hypnosis brand. So over time, it kind of shifted to the point that I'd say about 30% of my clientele in terms of seeing sessions, which that right there is the whole brand of hypnotic workers. That's my program that's all about teaching people how to do hypnotic change work. So the whole theme of hypnotic workers, there were two inspirations for that program. One of them was a magician by the name of Michael Close. I believe Michael's now up in Canada, if I remember right, but he put out a series of magic books for magicians called Workers. And the whole theme was he was a close-up magician at a magic restaurant venue, I believe, in Carmel, Indiana. I'm remembering all the details here. And the whole premise of his publishing was that he would never publish a magic trick to teach other magicians how to do what he did unless he had performed it, I believe, a specific number of times. So I sent an email to Michael as I was compiling 12 terabytes of hard drive storage of all my videos. I filmed every training that I had done to say... You know, I, I know you can't protect the term workers, yet I wanted to reach out and respectfully ask your blessing to call my program Hypnotic Workers, because I love that theme of only teaching things that have actually been done with real clients. The, the anecdote of this, and this is what's emulated in my Work Smart Hypnosis Live trainings, is that back, I think it was November last year, I had a student go who had gone through that course, and he's like, when are you going to do the advanced course? And my answer was, you've just learned exactly what I'm doing with my clients. This is a class that emulates exactly what would be going on if you were my client, whether in person or whether online. So Michael Close being a bit of an inspiration to that, but the other being Kelly T. Woods. I think I've told the story to her, but not yet here, where she goes, you know what I like about what you do? You're actually someone who's still seeing clients. So I, I bring that up as a bit of a foundation because back to that timeline, we're going to be moving into a temporary rental home to kind of be in town while our home is up for sale. The Northern Virginia market is a little wacky right now, and we're looking to make use of that before things begin to change in terms of the market in this area. 
Originally, the plan was, you know, so much of what we were doing was now online. My wife has a telecommuting job. We're homeschooling the kids. So much of what I do was already now migrated. It swapped to be about 90% online, maybe 10% in person. And the original plan, as I put out a special release podcast, was that, hey, we're going to kind of go on a bit of travel because we can do what we're currently doing basically anywhere. So in the first draft of the plan, in the first draft, let's go rent a home down in Daytona Beach, Florida, spend about three months down there. And once it gets uh, a little too warm down there and things get more expensive in the summer season, we'll then come back to Northern Virginia and buy a house. Basically, you know, put the money in savings after the sale and then come back a few months later. Let the Virginia Hypnosis Office sit a bit empty for a couple of months, maybe a temporary subletter, and then come back and reclaim it. And the more that this plan began to play out, the more the plan began to kind of take shape, then some questions started to be asked. What if we just stayed down there? Which the theme that's kind of interesting here, the time of timing of all of this, if you head over to Hypnotic Language Hacks, I believe it's episode number 20 with Scott Sandlin, where I believe for a lot of you out there in the hypnotic profession, if you haven't yet heard that, go over and listen to that, where it's a project that Scott has had in the works now for a number of years, and now it's out there. Now it's amazing. And similar to that, announcing that he was closing down his practice, changing up the shape of his business. And actually on that conversation, talking about a quote that he's heard from me several times over, just because you're good at something doesn't mean you have to do it the rest of your life. Now, take note, inside of any big major shift that we do, there's a lot of other changes that we have to start to make, which let's sidebar from my story and let me now share with you a strategy of change that you can do with your clients, that I will tell you this little nuance and it's a little bit of conversational influence that's then ratified in the hypnotic session, I would tell you probably as a big part of why I'm seeing greater results now than ever before, which is to take the client's issue and simply ask the question, as you've come in today, this is right now a major issue that you have been facing up until now. And take note of the careful phrasing there. This has been, distance and dissociate the language, this has been a major issue that you have been facing up until now. Though, let me ask you this, let's fast forward the story and it's like two or three years from now. And now what used to be a big challenge is only like a postage stamp sized anecdote as to something that what once once was. So rather than today being a major issue that has to be resolved, further hypnotizing yourself, this thing can't be solved. What happens for you instead when today's just about letting this old issue become that smallest of a step to move on to something bigger and greater? So, so what I'm doing there is linguistically shrinking down the severity of the issue and basically asking, what if instead of this being a massive issue, this was instead just a small step towards something bigger and better? Now, the process is no longer about eat this, don't eat that. Now, the process is no longer about this impossible fear, which, by the way, still seeing a ton of people for public speaking. <laughs> Turns out whether there's the audience or whether it's the webcam... They're still out there and we can still definitely help those people. And if you take a look at the new Jason Lynette brand, as well as hypnotic language hacks, that was in part built to better target that business clientele. That's a big part of the uh, hypnosis clients that I've been seeing for a number of years. So looking at the nature of that little bit of linguistics in a hypnotic session to take the issue, shrink it down and let it be the first step towards a much bigger journey. Now, it's not about quitting smoking, though you are going to be quitting smoking. It's instead about what bigger and better things you're going to be creating now that that old thing is behind you. Please use that. It's changed a lot of what I do. It's helped me to get even stronger results even faster. And I, and I bring that up here because as we talk about this theme of taking a leap, well, as the conversation began to turn into what if we just stayed down there, which yes, let's talk finances for a moment. Northern Virginia is one of the most expensive places to live in the United States. Without getting specific into numbers, let's just put it into this context. What it will sell, what, what a four-bedroom townhome will sell for in Northern Virginia, in the suburbs, will very easily buy about 5,000 square feet and a pool with some extra land around it. Now, we're not going to probably end up living in Daytona Beach. We're looking at quality of schools. 
we're looking at areas, to say it politely, that are a little bit more inland, a little bit higher above sea level to negate some of the uh, tropical storm and hurricane risks of Florida. And we're likely looking, at least as of right now, again, we're always welcome to change our opinions. We're likely looking north of Orlando, that's Seminole County, really a cool area, which is about, you know, 45 minutes to the beach, a little bit of a drive into the city of Orlando. And the nature of this kind of created a domino effect of what now has to happen. So for those following the game here, I bought my office in April of 2019. I have zero regrets of that action of buying that office, this office that I'm sitting in right now, an office that helped to continue the story of what was and what continues to be Virginia hypnosis, an office that in 2020 kind of transformed from an office to instead a really nice production studio as everything then migrated online and zero regrets of any step of that action. Yet in the shape of things, here is an asset that I'm in talks with a number of therapists and counselors who are going to be signing a lease sometime in the next week or so, and they're going to be moving into this space. So again, taking a leap, what often got us started inside of what we do is not often what takes us to the next step or even the things we continue to do. I began as a stage hypnotist. I began doing a motivational assembly program and fundraising program for schools which I have since retired myself from as I shifted that energy over to the energy of more education, more podcasting, and spending more time with folks like you, as well as increasing the reach of what I tend to do talking about hypnotic language patterns for people in business. That was a segment that involved a lot of travel, and if I could take that same energy and siphon it somewhere else, that served a greater audience, that served a greater benefit, and just to kind of highlight the strength of what that market built. There's still some deposits that are currently on the table as we're waiting to see what happens with schools in the next year or so. Uh, but in many ways, even though I haven't done those programs, my company still hosts those programs. And meanwhile, other stage hypnotists have been still serving those schools, even though I've since removed myself of that, which kind of brings us to the theme of what happens when you define yourself as a brand? What happens when you kind of position yourself in a way that you've built a geographic business, which I will call this out right now. It is so much easier to win the local search than it is a global search. The relaunch of all things Jason Lynette, the transformation of what used to be Work Smart NLP, which is now a program over on the Jason Lynette site called Business Influence Systems, which is my NLP languaging, as well as more linguistic-based business strategies. This is a program different from hypnotic business systems. Hypnotic business systems is specifically for hypnotists getting hypnosis clients. Business influence is instead a program for, look at the community that's already inside of that world. We've got accountants, we've got personal trainers, we've got contractors, we've got people of other business styles in that world, which I will say the launch of this new project has gone quite well. The launch of the new project has gone quite well, yet clearly as it's only at this point in January 2021, still building traction, still building awareness, I will have gone on about maybe 100 podcasts in a 12-month span as a guest, helping to build the brand awareness of that and helping to get that up and running. And yet still, there's a lot more scale, there's a lot bigger of an audience that that can reach. So that's going to take some time, and I'm in that for the long haul, the same way that here we are, episode number 307 of Work Smart Hypnosis. So looking around, I will say this, I am not ready to let go of a website with 12 years of search engine uh, benefit behind it, and kind of engaged in some cool dialogues with some of my students, and let me now jokingly pat myself on the back, as a dialogue was kind of open to go, is anyone interested in taking over this site? that, again, here's the asset of this. And I received this message at least six times now. You taught me so well from your trainings. You taught me so well inside of hypnotic business systems that I don't need to take over yours because I've built my own. And that gives me so much more pleasure. That gives me so much more happiness than signing a contract and letting a website go to someone else. So transparency, we're going to put some information on the website, but we're not going to turn that website off. The website right now points to online or in-person services, 
And it's going to then transition to say, this business was built in this location. And now as I've moved to the area, I'm still servicing clients online. Here's where to go for that. Now we're going to do some changes, of course, to the Work Smart Hypnosis website, because as everything has transformed over the years, in terms of looking inside of, uh, let's call this out, looking inside of QuickBooks, <laughs> the Work Smart Hypnosis brand is six times the size of Virginia Hypnosis. And that's not just because education can go further, it's because that is a scalable program. You know, looking at people who can join online programs, looking at people who can interact inside of online communities. Meanwhile, working with clients in terms of a one-to-one -one, as is still my passion and is not going away is still a bit of a dollars for hours strategy. It's limited based on the amount of time you're willing to put in and the number of weekly clients you're willing to see. And I'm not willing to let that go as we transition and settle somewhere in Florida, as we've been talking with a real estate agent down there who's helping us do a bit of a search. We're not gonna, we're not gonna buy until we're down there, until we can actually step foot and see it. The line was, do not think of the fact that we need an extra bedroom to be Jason's office. No, we need a space that will work as a production studio in home, where that's where I'll be running my online events. That's where I'll be doing my podcasting. That's where I'll be seeing my clients very much in the same way that I have since all these months since March with a few minor exceptions. So again, popping on here and sharing this whole story in terms of transparency, because it's where people find me because of the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast, which let me kind of call out a bit of a commentary here that I've sometimes seen where there are some who almost put down the mindset of putting effort into education that, no, 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 I'm more interested in seeing my clients. As I look at my role in this industry, as I look at my role inside of what I do, my responsibility to my students, I can make a really good difference in this world by working with clients one-to-one. -one. Here's someone I heard back from the other day that it's been eight years, hasn't smoked, life has completely changed. Here's the woman who saw me for business confidence years ago, and as not to point a finger, as she is watching a number of her friends deal with jobs being lost and industries being kind of shut down in the midst of a pandemic, she goes, if it wasn't for the work we did back to 2016, I don't want to celebrate this, but she goes, I was able to increase my income because I was in a market now that I was in control of my own time, energy, and efforts. So we find ourselves in a situation where as the old line that I kind of based the opening chapter of my Work Smart Business book after, the amateur changes their act, the professional changes their audience. So here's the impact that I can continue to have and will continue to have working with people one-to-one. -one. However, the one-to-many creates an even greater impact to what you do. This is why I made it a point reaching out to Scott Richard and Stephanie, the team behind HypnoThoughts Live to say, I need to teach hypnotic products there once again. This is my two-day business creation system in terms of creating profits from passive income products. So it's where it doesn't have to be a this or that. And that's kind of what I'm getting at here. I often see this binary thinking in terms of you're either doing classes or you're doing this. And there can be a balance of it because I'll call this out. As I promote my services, that brings me students. As I promote my classes, that brings me clients. So it's where, as I've built this global hypnosis brand, that's all things around what I do. That's what's allowed every part of this to continue to, to continue to thrive and to make that decision as to this is where I want to shift that energy and to kind of look around and go, we can throw the biggest wrench into all of this and have everything still work, if not grow even better. So we began this conversation, you and I here today, kind of with the introduction of the theme of metaphor. So this is where I would now break my rules. Let's go to another hypnotic teaching moment for a bit here. Do you unpack the metaphor? To which some would say yes, because the client might not understand why you tell the story. Some would say don't, because the client's unconscious mind can figure it out. I kind of ride the fence between the two. Here's a story, here's a metaphor, here's whatever you know, sort of perspective and descriptive language we've used. And I kind of use the ride the fence strategy of, and perhaps your conscious mind has already put together exactly why I'm telling you this story today. Meanwhile, deep within your unconscious now, all parts of your mind are already making use of all the meanings and understandings as to what this now means for you. So it's this way of kind of riding that fence. So let me just go ahead and unpack everything that I've just shared with you. 
when we set the frame for what we do and we stay true to that frame, we drive the communication. Whoever's the most flexible in their communication drives the communication. Thank you, NLP presuppositions. So inside of everything I've just now just kind of laid out there in front of you in terms of what's in the works, what I'm up to, how we're going to be reshooting a whole lot of videos over the next five or six weeks. And I'm filming audio recording this right now as I'm looking at a slate full of three clients today with a pack schedule and also popping onto a podcast going, I need to just block some time off and shoot these videos. When you set those rules for yourself. So early on, one of the biggest changes that took place in my business was I set my hours. I'm in the office Monday through Friday. I start at 9 30 in the morning. I leave at 5 30. So inside of that time, at one point, I was doing a bit of a marathon schedule, 9.30, 11, 1 o'clock, 2.30, 4 would be my appointments. Not every session was a full hour and a half, so that's when I'd kind of return calls or eat something in between appointments. Eventually, just to put it out there in terms of everything you've heard so far, that clearly seeing hypnosis clients is not the only hypnosis thing that I do. So at one point, the schedule became 10, 12, 2, and 4. Eventually, that morphed into 10, 1, and 4. And nowadays, it's either an 11 o'clock or a 3 o'clock. Today is a bit of a different day just because I had some people who are in from out of town that I'm seeing in person. Yay, distancing. Yay, masks. And seeing in person and kind of adjust the hours to kind of make things work. The moment you set those rules, that becomes the universe in which now your business runs inside of. So on the door of the Virginia Hypnosis office, about maybe 20 feet away from me right now, a door that's closed and locked right now, it says by appointment only. The way that we rebuilt, those of you that have Velvet Rope Strategy from me, from uh, Hypnotic Business Systems, which we'll link to that if you don't yet have, that we took one of the most popular segments of Hypnotic Business Systems and spun it off as its own separate little mini $27 program. The, the value that's going to create for your business by implementing the strategy, which I'm going to give you the scripting, I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step tutorial. Let me give a simple website for that. If you just plug in now.worksmarthypnosis.com. That'll bring you directly over to that velvet rope and you'll see all the stories. You'll see not just my successes, the success of other students and clients as well. Put that to use. But what happened there was I set the rule that you can't call this business. You can't call me. No, you have to go through a scheduling application, fill out a form to then schedule time to speak with me. And you know what? For those of you who push back against that idea, my clients thank me for that because it makes things so much more convenient. You know, I'll call this out. I'm having to go back and forth. I use a bit of a prepaid legal service that I just tend to use for any sort of contract review in business. It also has some personal benefits. They did wills for uh, my wife and I, you know, and it's, and it's a bit of a nightmare of the game of phone tag because they don't have a good system to get in touch with the person who's reviewing the lease agreement that we're building to have someone now come in and rent this office while I'm 800 miles south from here. So I've built a system in the Virginia Hypnosis brand, which eventually spilled over to everything else. Those people who have questions about my trainings, they can't just call me now. You know, they then schedule time, which then allows us to have a better conversation because we've made time for each other. So the next step of this is kind of changing up some of the rules, setting the hours, because with a strong asterisk next to this next statement, no, I don't see clients in person. We have proven a long-term viability of online hypnosis. Those of you keeping track in the Work Smart Hypnosis community on Facebook, we turn this into a bit of a challenge to say, do a video to attract more clients. And I'll pick three of the winners and I'm giving away three free spots to HypnoThoughts Live. This episode is releasing on January 14th. So all of those spots will have already been given away to the people who kind of took on that challenge. And it's not just about winning a free spot to a conference. It's really about creating the assets necessary to attract your clients. I mentioned an asterisk though. I have done at some times what uh, Richard Nongard refers to as concierge hypnosis, where I was paid a good amount of money to travel, be put up in a hotel and work with someone for a full day and a half or so. Yeah, we'll go there. But for the most part, there is not going to be a office. There's not going to be a designated public office space in the next step of this move, which the whole issue of walk-ins, I got to call this out. We're in the middle of a pandemic. This is not the time to be knocking on my door and trying to sell me office supplies, as I politely or impolitely said to the guy who was at my door at 9.15 this morning. Oh, no, 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 no. 
which by the way, I'm not really using a whole lot of office supplies this year. You know, my budget for buying snacks for classes isn't so high in 2020 as we're looking at the accounting. So what this all means to you is set rules and follow through, which again, as we like to do, let's turn this into a strategy with your clients that in many ways you may have had those moments as a parent where you set rules for your child the opportunity to give them a bedtime because in the midst of everything, whether they may fight against it, that child mind craves for structure. They want to keep doing what feels normal. That's the nature of the subconscious mind. And so as you walk out that door today, you begin to set rules for yourself. These are the times you eat. These are the times you don't eat. These are the foods that fit within this plan and this track as to where you're now going. And these are those things that not, no longer belong. The same way that there are things that you believe in, there are things that you don't believe in. There's things that you would do, there's things that you would not do. The difference today is you simply set new rules for yourself and easily follow through. So keep watching, keep listening, because over the next, uh, oh, let's call it out, year, uh, <laughs> because we finally solved the issue of sound bounce in my classroom, just in perfect time for some other people to come in and want to lease it. And they're going to put up a wall and turn the classroom into two smaller therapy offices. They don't, they don't have a need for a class. So a classroom space. So it's where I'd say, keep watching. You know, my goal is always to say that the more we're all successful, the more we're all successful. I thank so many of you for the messages that I receive back doing that twice a week series. Those of you who keep posting and sharing this conversation that we've had going now for seven years, that is the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast. I'm not going anywhere. Well, I am going somewhere else, but this conversation is one that's going to continue well into the years ahead. The more we're all successful, the more we're all successful. And my task to model the catchphrase of a friend of mine is to not be that person who can tell you what worked yesterday for your hypnosis business. No, it's to continue to be that person who can tell you what's going to work tomorrow in your hypnosis business. At the core of everything, Every marketing program I've gone through has said, shoot videos and tell stories. What I want to upgrade that to is be transparent, tell stories. I got some pushback on the Virginia Hypnosis website because I tell a deeply personal story on the weight loss page of that site. And someone goes, well, the change isn't about you. It's about the client to which I go, I am getting a stronger result more than ever. I am building better rapport with my clientele because I tell my story now inside of that. People do business with people. People connect with other folks. So stop using the royal we on your website. As I said to someone yesterday in a private consulting session, make it about the dialogue of you and that other person. So build that relationship over time. I jumped into a call with someone yesterday who goes, this is so cool. We're connecting and having a conversation for the first time ever in person. It was online. Yet I feel like I already know you. And I will very openly say that that is no accident. That is something by continuously putting out conversations, and it's not marketing videos, it's not promotional stuff. It's about opening up a conversation, model this with your clients, model this, those of you who have students, model this with a way that we can increase that reach of what we do. So as it's now popular to kind of go away, or at least let's not say it's a replacement, let's not go controversial on that, uh, the theme of the one word for the year that I've heard Mike and Chris talk about over on Brain Software Podcast and inside of their Mike Mandel community. I saw Dan Candell posting about it, many others too. It's become a popular theme. The word for 2021 is reach. Jason Lynette here once again. And as always, thank you for joining me on this program. Thanks for letting this become part of your continued conversation in this industry, sharing it on your social media streams, interacting online, and of course, leaving your reviews as well. For more like this and to get more of the behind the scenes of what I'm up to and what, what's working yesterday, today, and tomorrow, head over to hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. Dot com. That is the all-access pass to my hypnosis business training library, step-by-step -step tutorials, done-for-you marketing campaigns, and the biggest part of it now is a thriving community of practitioners all around the world and nearly every continent, continent all supporting each other and talking about what's working right now. You don't have to do this alone. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Join a community that's ready to support you at hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. Get out there and reach. Thanks for listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast at WorkSmartHypnosis.com.
Hey there, it's Jason, and I want you to be one of the first to find out as we upload amazing new content. So do this right now. Click the subscribe button right here on this video. That's going to link you to our YouTube channel here, and you will be the first to find out as new resources and downloads are made available. Do it now.